Hey guys, today we're going over Matthew's EDC update for October, but before we get into this, we have a really special announcement to make. Matthew and I got engaged <laughs> as of yesterday. Show him your ring, show it. Show it to the world. We'll be getting a closer up view We will soon be. Enough. We will be. Anyway, guys, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let's hey guys, get it. This is a little bit late for necessarily the first part of October. I had to wait just for a little bit more gear, so that's why this wasn't posted like the first of October. But anyways, guys, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that nice announcement announcing this uh, video and other things but <clears throat> today that is exactly what we're getting into is my october everyday carry and before we dig into it it has changed quite a lot and so i really wanted to switch this up because i realized last month when doing my edc that i've really been doing the same edc gear month after month after month and nothing had really changed so i actually wanted to really surprise you guys and while not everything in this edc has changed up a substantial amount of it has actually changed up. So without any further ado, let's dig into my EDC. This is my system. Uh, I'm going to be going over my neck first and this is actually nothing has changed with my neck and that's primarily because I like everything that hangs around my neck already a lot and so there's really not much need to change at least currently and so so far on my neck all I carry is the SE3 on necklace of course so an se3 just general defensive option and overall good knife and then of course i carry the exotac nano striker xl and uh, i carry that as a good ferrocerium rod option and i like having a ferro rod on my neck because it's a really convenient place to carry it on to now next my wrists and once again this is an area where not a lot has changed but still rocking the little seiko SNK803 for the watch and then of course just a myriad of different paracord bracelets. This one I kind of brought back because I hadn't uh, worn it in a handful of months and of course this is just dragon teeth in a brown and burnt orange which is one of my favorite color combos and I really like that. And on to this EDC I have expanded it. I have expanded it in a few ways and of course added a ring this one as you guys have kind of already seen ashley's it's the same exact thing it's made by carbon six or c6 rings and i'll leave a link in the description below where you can check them out and so this one here is of course kind of hard to see but it's just silver on the inside and then the only difference between this one and ashley's ring is um that hers is a gloss finish and this one's satin but other than that they're the same exact ring and <clears throat> i really like this style and i actually kind of being a little bit of a car guy as i'm sure some of you guys know i like high-end cars and so carbon fiber is something i really love and so these are carbon fiber rings with silver uh, inlay on them and they're very gorgeous rings I think I'll roll in a picture here of the two together but they're very pretty rings and I really like them moving on to the belt and the belt itself is still a click two millimeter duty belt and this one of course still an olive slate uh, something like that slate olive something like that and uh, that's the belt not much has changed there and once again still rocking the awesome leatherman surge multi-tool and it's good old leatherman leather sheath it's pretty worn out but uh, still the same stuff now the biggest change on the belt and it's actually a pretty big change i know i told you guys that i was not going to be switching up handguns anytime soon but i kind of lied actually i was telling the truth at the time I really didn't think I would be getting another handgun but that was clearly incorrect and so um so another handgun and this one is a Glock 19 and this one's been Cerakoted fully factory Cerakot of Magpul Flat Dark Earth and uh, I think this is a really awesome finish. As you guys can see, uh, th some of the parts here and some of the factory parts like the magazine release and all that stuff is still factory black. But as far as the actual handgun goes itself, I'll roll in some more pictures of this gun so you guys can get a better view of it. But it is fully uh, 
fully Cerakoted uh, this Magpul Flat Dark Earth is at least what they called it. And so Generation 4, this is of course not a Generation 5 because I don't think they have any Gen 5s in uh, factory custom finishes like this one. But anyways, really love this one. I threw the beaver tail on here because I've actually ran other 19s in the past. I found that this beaver tail and kind of medium flare tends to sit in my hands just a little bit better. But that's just a personal thing and really love this coloration. I think it just looks awesome. And I really wanted to try out a 9mm uh, handgun in a smaller size. I really enjoyed the uh, Glock 21 for what it was, the whole full size handgun. I really enjoyed the uh, Glock 21 for what it was being a full sized handgun, but there were a lot of times when I would really appreciate just a slightly smaller handgun. And uh, the hand or the 19 really fits my hand like a dream. Like it really, it's like just there and it fits so well. And so I really bonded to the 19 a lot. And so I wanted to get one myself. And so I got a 19. So I got a 19 and really love it. I also love the fact that it's a 9mm, so it's easy easier to get ammo. The ammo is cheaper and more readily accessible and so I can actually get out and train with this thing. Like already it's had 200 rounds through it. I've already had or only had it for like three weeks so have not had a long time but put quite a few rounds through it and really love this Glock 19. I've shot, like I said, I shot another Glock 19 and I really further confirmed my want for a Glock 19. And so I was like, I gotta get one. And so that's what ended up happening. I got one and of course, uh, magazines obviously running just standard Glock factory magazines and I'm running for ammunition uh, Hornady just critical defense for right now that's about all I can find that I'd like to shoot and uh, for the most part I really do like critical duty so obviously fully loaded magazine one in the chamber and then for carrying it because I can't quite carry concealed yet legally so I carry a Bravo concealment or I carry it in a Bravo concealment uh, BCA which is the Bravo concealment adaptive I believe it is and this is an outside the waistband holster as I hope you guys can see there and for the most part I really like it and I think this holster holds the gun securely but not super super tight you guys can see there it has a good amount of retention and a really positive click in and out of the uh, holster and like I said it holds it secure enough you guys can see but it does let it go so uh if you do actually want to pull the gun out it'll actually come out another note is this is a USA version of the Glock so just a tiny bit different this is all that's on my belt now digging into pockets there's really not a whole lot of order with my pockets so I'm just kind of gonna go on a sporadic just everything so the first thing off to change is the phone i switched it up i used to have an htc 1m9 had it for a few years it was a reliable phone but as i said it was kind of dying like the battery would just continually die and die and die so anyways i replaced it with a samsung uh, samsung galaxy s7 edge and uh, this one's sitting in a red red and red uh, otter box commuter I think it is I wanted to switch it up because the defender case is a really awesome case by um, otter box but I really thought it was a little bit too bulky for me and I just didn't need that much bulk with my phone so I switched up to a really awesome red looking otter box commuter and of course switched up to the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge there we go right that time so getting out of the way of course as is my tradition uh, I'm carrying another fully loaded uh, 15 round magazine for the Glock 19 I'm probably actually going to get a 17 round mag for the Glock 19 to carry as a spare but for now I mean a 15 round mag is close enough so that's it sits in one of my pockets on the lower leg. Next is the wallet, and as you guys can see, that is my UAF card. Hopefully you guys can see. As you guys can see, that's my UAF card, but uh, sitting in this, this is a Trayvax Summit wallet, and this one has the armor plate on it, and so that's what this front portion is. The actual wallet itself is this portion here, is this portion actually here, and it's this strap that comes around, but normal Trayvax wallets wouldn't have this front panel so this front panel as you can see is actually removable so 
it's what they call their armor plate for the Trayvac Summit, but I really like this thing and I wanted to switch it up. I've been carrying the Recycled Firefighter for around a year now and I really love that wallet. It was actually my dream wallet for a long time. Like it just seems so cool and it's still a really awesome wallet, but the one thing I was kind of displeased with it was is, and it's kind of, it kind of makes sense, but the fabric over a year or over the course of a year, it really stretched out so like like when you pulled out one card or two cards to do something, it would actually affect the retention on the entire wallet. And so the wallet itself was not retaining cards. I mean, if you filled it to the amount of uh, cards that it needed to hold tension, it would hold tension. But if you wanted to run less cards, uh, it would not hold tension. And so what I kind of like about this one is the tension is gained by this frontal strap here. So over the course of time, as I shift and sometimes I'll have less cards, sometimes I'll have more cards. Uh, as the cards shift or the card level shift, all I have to do is shift this back piece here and I'll continue to have the right and proper tension to keep this wallet all together. So next on to the new things, I switched up flashlights. This is a Mech Army, I got to use that saying that, Mech Army SPX-10 flashlight. And this one is quite a differential between my last two flashlights, the Protec 2L and for the longest time, the Innova T2. Uh, this one is significantly more powerful. It shoots out 1100 lumens and has a really awesome strobe to it. it is is very crazy bright and it's actually smaller than the uh, T2 was so really like this flashlight so far it's pretty big pretty bulky but it's actually around the same size as the T2 like I said same size as the T2 in thickness but it's about a tenth of an inch shorter than the T2 uh, including the clicky switch so it's just a little bit shorter than the T2 and a little bit easier to carry but feels great and once again really really bright see it's not that dark right now but you can see this thing's pretty freaking bright so uh this thing's gonna be really fun to use over the winter because it's always fun to go out in the pitch black with a super powerful flashlight and just shine it so anyways on to some smaller things i switched up the burt's bees actually i do have to say i'm not a professional burt's bees like lip balm reviewer but out of all the different flavors or styles, whatever you want to call them, that I've tried, this one's actually the most amazing. This one's their blueberry and dark chocolate. I'm not eating it, but it seriously tastes and smells amazing. Like, this stuff is great. I've tried the pomegranate, the peppermint, the cocum butter one too, and they're all good. Like, I've never really crossed one that I've disliked from Burt's Bees, but this one, if you guys are looking for a Burt's Bees, lip balm or chapstick definitely check out the blueberry and dark chocolate like it smells amazing like i i can't even kid you guys it seriously is good so try it out if you are going for an awesome lip balm so next of course as usual i carry a just a green bandana for blowing noses or whatever you need it for uh, really good <clears throat> idea especially nowadays because it's getting colder out and my nose tends to run more in the cold so it's always nice to have as an option then la or next not lastly but then next is my zippo just of course a standard old black zippo so nothing too special about that then of course onto my writing instruments these have not changed either because a black sharpie and the fisher space pen they're just two things that they just work like I don't have to worry about either of them stopping their functionality I use both of them nearly every single day and they're very very good and very reliable next of course is the Victorinox classic SD just a small little uh, multi-tool I love using it for a lot of different situations and then lastly getting on to our last two and these two are new as you guys have noticed I haven't really showed off the two pocket knives that's because they are different finally switched them up or the knives are number one is a Benchmade AFK auto and I wanted to try out an auto I've actually never had an auto and a few years back I think it's actually now been like 2012 but quite a few years years back um 
Alaska did legalize autos and ballast songs for carry, and so you can totally legally carry these things in the state of Alaska. But autos have always, at least like to get a quality auto that I really would love and like perform exactly how I needed it to, they'd always really been out of my price range, but I decided really just to hone down and just get one already. And so this one's a Benchmade AFK, and <clears throat> I got this one used for $100 less, actually more than $100 less than they usually are, but it has been a stellar performer and <clears throat> I really do like it so far and it's been a fun auto to have and once again finally adding an auto to my collection because I really wanted to get an auto so they're not like absolutely amazing change the entire world I'm still carrying manual folders but it's a nice variation so then next and you guys have probably seen in photos or just around is the Benchmade 940-2 and so these are the two knives that I'm carrying on me EDC, besides of course the SC3. But aside from the SC3, these are the two knives. And like I said, this is a Benchmade 940-2. And I've been really liking this one. It's been interesting. It's taken me a little while to warm up to the Dash 2 or the 940-2. I actually have handled 940s before, but I, what I really, or the reason why I really didn't want to get a 940 before now was that honestly, I've never really liked the 940, which comes as a pretty big shock because there's quite a few people out there who love of the 940 and like people like Wrangler Star have bought like five of these things so I mean he really really loves the 940 myself I think personally that the blade is just a little bit too thin and the same with the handle I think this knife is just really like pencil thin generally my preference of knives is more like this and so just holding these two up so you can see you can see the AFK has way more width to the blade, way more width to the handle. I mean, it is a more combat kind of knife, but it feels just like a more substantial knife. It feels really filling in the hand, whereas the 940-2, uh, it still like fills the hand kind of, but it feels very... So anyways, guys, that is all. And as you guys hopefully saw, I rolled in just a little bit of footage of why I'm not over there where the intro is filmed. Uh, there's actually snow over where the intro is filmed so uh yeah i can't actually really be over there right now because it's kind of covered with snow and of course we have snow we got some last night not so luckily <laughs> but uh winter is definitely here and uh it's definitely before most people's winter in lower 48 but anyways guys that's all I have to bring to you guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed my everyday carry for October. Hopefully you guys liked some of the gear and I was able to surprise you guys quite a bit by really changing up a lot of my gear. Anyways guys, that's all for now. God bless and I'm out.